A small cell lung cancer is differentiated from non-small cell lung cancer by rapid doubling time, high growth fraction, early development of widespread mats. How to define a small cell lung cancer? It is basically a poorly differentiated high grade neuroendocrine carcinoma which need to be differentiated from other neuroendocrine cancers. So in order to differentiate, this is a very good table in which you can see typical carcinoid, atypical carcinoid, large cell neuroendocrine carcinoid in a small cell. So the neuroendocrine features of a small cell are poorly differentiated as compared to other which are well differentiated. Cell size is small to intermediate. Mitotic activity is high median more than 80 mitosis as compared to 70, 2, 10 and less than 2. Then uh, comes to the KI 67 index which is around 80 to 100 percent and the five year survival among all is worst in a small cell lung cancer. So whenever you are studying a cancer and need to diagnose a cancer you have to find out which histology subtype is the cancer is and how to recognize that immunohistochemical markers which are positive for that cancer and molecular diagnostic biomarkers. Let's go to the histopath first. So in a small cell lung cancer, the most important characteristic histological findings are small blue malignant cells. Then cytoplasm is a sphere, nuclear features are granular chromatin. In H and E stain, it looks like salt and pepper like appearance, as you can see the slide here. Second comes to IHC markers. In majority of cases, it is CK cytokeratin, AE1 and AE3. TTF1 is positive in 80 to 90% of small cell lung cancer it is also positive in adenocarcinoma but this differentiate small cell from other neuroendocrine tumors if this is positive then other neuroendocrine tumors are excluded then ct56 synaptophysin chromogranin insulin like growth factor 1 gene abnormalities in a small cell cancer P53 in 75 to 98%, retinoblastoma gene 1, MYC in 20%. Epidemiology, the overall survival, survival is about 7% in small cell lung cancer. Accounts, it all together it accounts for around 15% of all the lung cancers. It has two types, limited and extensive. Limited, it is confined to ipsilateral hemithorax and regional nodes able to be included in a single tolerable radiotherapy port. And if we go into TNM classification, it is a stage 1 and a stage 3B. In extensive, Tumor beyond the boundaries of limited disease, including distinct mets. Prognosis. In limited small cell cancer, it's about 15 to 20 months. And in extensive, it is about 8 to 13 months. Now coming towards the treatment part. Before going treatment, one more important factor it is it exclusively occur in smokers 
but in 2% can occur in non-smokers as well. Now, the disease, uh, the treatment depends on the limited or extensive disease. Let's talk about the limited first. In the limited, you have to find out what is the staging. If clinically there is no nodal involvement and the size is T1, T2, then the next step is mediastinal staging. We'll talk about mediastinal staging later on. If the mediastinal staging shows no nodal involvement, then send patient for surgical resection to cardiothoracic surgeon. If, just in case, it is the patient is not medically fit for surgery, then you can send patient for SABR, that is stereotetic ablative body radiation therapy. Let's come to surgical resection. Once surgical resection is done, then you have to see if there is any nodal involvement there or not. If there is no nodal involvement, then simple adjoint chemotherapy. Only chemotherapy as compared to if pathological lymph nodes positive after surgical resection, you have to go for adjoint chemoradiation. Both chemo and radiation. Before deciding patient for chemo radiation or chemotherapy, you have to check for the performance status of patient, which is ECOG, WHO performance status. If it is good, 0 to 2, send patient for chemotherapy or chemoradiotherapy, no issues. If there is a poor status because of the cancer itself, you can send for sequential chemoradiotherapy. Both are to be the options. If the poor performance status is because of other comorbid conditions, then you have to decide for the best supportive care and individualized targeted supportive therapy. Now come back here. So after giving adjuvant chemo and adjuvant chemo radiation according to the lymph nodes involvement, send patient for PCI which is prophylactic cranial irradiation and then keep the patient under surveillance. Let's go back. What if there is nodal involvement? So if there is nodal involvement or in the beginning if nodes were positive or clinically patient was T3, T4, then the option is not for surgery, it's for CCRT that is concurrent chemoradiation therapy. And then according to this response, you can treat and later take the patient further on. So if CCRT is working and there is a complete response or significant tumor regression, you can again send the patient for PCI and keep under surveillance. If after CCRT there is a limited response, then you can't send the patient for PCI, keep the patient under surveillance. If there is a disease progression, you can send the patient for second line chemotherapy or you can enroll the patient in clinical trials. What is the preferred chemotherapy? So etoposide plus cisplatin is the preferred one, but there are alternatives like carboplatin can be given as a substitute of cisplatin. There are other regimes as well which can be considered. Now coming towards the extensive. In extensive disease, Induction therapy is followed by maintenance therapy. In induction therapy, we give patient chemo immunotherapy and then on a maintenance keep the patient on immunotherapy. So for immunotherapy, you can select PD-1s or PDL, PDL1 ligands 
it is all using map, the volume map. These both improve the survival. You can choose either of them. 